Hello and welcome back to Fierce Kitten Studio Channel. Today we're going to talk about how to handle corners and curves in sewing. Um, you're going to come up against a lot of these when you're sewing handbags. Um, sharp turns and curves can be a little daunting to face, like the first few times that you do a bag. So I thought I'd go through a few uh, tips and tricks on how I've handled these in the past. The gist of it is, slow down. Okay, so here we're gonna have a domestic machine. I'm not gonna use my industrial machine for this demonstration um, because honestly, the, the parts just look completely different. So I think it's better to go with the domestic. And if anybody's curious, this is my Janome M7 Continental. I do have a video on it um, if you wanna know more about it. So the, there's a couple things that you need to know in order to handle things like these sharp corners or a nice tight curve. Um, both of which, you know, people kind of get confused on how to handle appropriately and to keep nice stitching. So first off, you need to know about your presser foot lever. So that's usually located right on the back of the needle shank portion here. Um, there's a little lever. Every machine is different, but typically it's right behind there. You can kind of feel back there or, or look and you'll see it um, and you just lift it up and it'll just lift up the presser foot. Uh, some machines actually also have like a needle up, needle down, presser foot, presser down like this one does. Oh yeah, the lights came on, that's fun. Now we can see nothing. So that's presser foot down, presser foot up. And then I have a needle down and needle up, right? So, but not everybody has these fancy little features. So that's why I'm trying to tell you about in the back, you know, you have your lever that'll do this manually. The other thing is over here on the side, you can see a wheel. Um, now this wheel here, let me see if I can kind of zoom in on the wheel. There we go. Um, this is the wheel that also controls the needle position. And usually if I tell people you need to roll it down, you roll it toward yourself and that's going to feed the fabric the correct way. It's kind of the opposite of what you would think. You would think if you go the opposite direction of yourself that it would um, you know, feed the fabric in that direction, but it's actually completely and totally opposite. Um, so this turning toward yourself is going to maneuver the needle position and also run the feed dogs. So that's important to know because when you're doing the tight curves and, and such that I will be demonstrating down here in just a moment, um, you may find that you have to do some manual work. You're gonna have to manually manipulate the position of your needle and you're, have to, you're gonna have to control the speed. Now another thing, if you, if you uh, aren't aware, all presser foots, well not presser foot, I'm sorry, the pedal to the machine, which is located under there, way under here. Sorry, I'll move it out. The chair always pushes it back. So this guy, oh, look at my feet. And also revealing I'm still wearing my party pants. Sorry. Um, it accepts pressure. So it's only going to move at the speed based on the pressure of your foot sitting on it. So you can control speed that way. Some more modern machines have a dial that looks very similar to this. And what this does is it controls your top speed. So if you put your foot all the way down on this machine right now, on that, on that pedal down there, it's only gonna go about half of its complete and utter total possible speed. So this is kind of like setting a speed limit. These are very helpful too. When you're first learning, I suggest to push it all the way down. And if you don't have this option, don't worry about that. Um, but this, these are just little helpful tips for you. Um, I am not going to be covering based on this. I'm going to assume that no one has fancy buttons or speed features like this. Okay, so let's get right in to the demonstration. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this type of video here without me being zoomed in because there's a lot that's gonna be going on, okay? So let's say we're gonna start with the sharp corner first and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start stitching 
um, I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll you know, I'll do a lock stitch at the very beginning. Some machines don't have that, but basically that's the stitch forward a couple, stitch back a couple, just to lock that stitch in. And we're gonna sew up to the corner within the seam allowance. Now my machine is configured to stop halfway. So, but you may not have that. And I apologize because sometimes what happens is these machines, they kind of do all the fancy stuff and then I do a demo video and I'm like, great, thanks for that. So I, what I did was I just mimicked a standard machine. Your needle's gonna be upright when you stop stitching. You wanna reach over, I'm making sure the camera view is in there, and grab that wheel and pull it toward yourself until the needle is halfway through the fabric. All right, so now the needle, what is it, it's doing is it's holding the fabric so it can't really shift out of place so you, the stitching won't move. Then reach to the back lever and lift up the presser foot and pivot. It's kind of like a couch. Just, just lift up that presser foot and you can slide the fabric around and because the needle is in there, the fabric isn't gonna go anywhere really in terms of like shifting off of your millimeters and you can keep the same stitch length that you have been having. Put the presser foot back down once you've positioned it and start heading down. Now the next section is going to be that tight curve. So I'm gonna show you what we do here. So we're gonna stitch up to the tight curve and it's kind of like with the car, if you're going 50 miles per hour and you come up on a curve and it's like, hey, you need to be 30. You don't go to 60. You're gonna, you're gonna fall off a cliff. Not, not nice, right? So you can either uh, go very slowly by tampering down your speed or typically like such on, as on my industrial machine, which is pretty much the better example of handling this because it's so fast. Um, with this one, what you're gonna do, you may have to take the wheel, guide with your left hand, and then gently turn the fabric as the feed dogs move. So what I'm doing is with this hand, I'm guiding the fabric to where I want it to go because as I rotate the wheel here, it is already going to uh, you know, move the feed dogs underneath. It's not just the needle up and down, it's also feeding the fabric. So you can do this if it's a super tight curve. Let's say, let's say we cranked up our stitch length. I'm gonna crank it up to five just, just to demonstrate this. It's gonna slide a heck of a lot forward, which is gonna kinda, it's a little harder to manage, especially on bags. And so you wanna do the pivot technique. So now we have the needle halfway down. We're gonna lift that presser foot and shift it just a little to kind of follow the curve. And do one stitch, halfway down, press her foot up, pivot. One more stitch, needle halfway down, press her up, press her foot up rather, and pivot. And a stitch, and then pivot it. And now we're in a place where we followed the curve and we can go straight, and we're gonna just stitch that home and we're done. And then I showed off my fancy machine. But here in this point here, what I can show you, oh my God, it's so annoying to try to show you guys this. You can see how I basically followed that curve um, over here. Um, ah, it's so hard to show you guys this on this camera while also looking at my computer behind me. <laughs> but. Um, you can see those longer stitches were a little harder to keep right. Um, but if you do it by hand like that, if you hand crank, it is annoying, but it does get the job done. Um, one bit of advice I could give you is you can take a chalk pencil um, and draw out the line and it might be easier, especially on darker fabric like this. And the reason I use the darker fabric is so the stitching could be a little more visible. Um, you know, so make it pop for the video. But uh, you could also uh, draw with a chalk pencil so that you can follow that line as you're going around. Um, the other thing is, even if you're, even if you're top stitching uh, these curves, like this is a, the kind of curve you would see on the Necessary Clutch Wallet by Emmeline Bags, um, 
you, uh, you could, if you want, tighten up your stitch length as you go through the corners. Think of it as your car coming to uh, pumping the brakes before going around that nice tight curve, um, and then you can speed it up again. The stitching will definitely look different though if you do it that way, um, but as you can see here, based on the way that I pivoted, it actually looks just fine. Now, other things you can do, because sometimes we're so focused on where the needle is, we don't look at where the fabric is going, and, and it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to look and eyeball the lines um, for the seam allowance on the side here. You know, I mean, sometimes these etchings are kind of hard to read. So what you can do is you can actually get a little magnetic guy to put down in here. I think I have one, or I used to, <laughs> and now I don't know where it is. My kid probably stole it. That sounds like a really good excuse. Anyway, I thought I had one, sorry. Um, but you can place a magnet on these. It's not gonna hurt the machine. They're not industrial, military grade magnets, um, but you can put a magnet on there and it will help you guide it. Actually, now, now I'm just like livid and I have to find, yeah, there it is. It's sticking on my industrial. So my industrial moves like a million miles a minute. So that's why, but I use this little magnet guide here. And what I can do is I can just eyeball that and I can make the fabric glide against that and I don't have to worry about it. See, so to demonstrate the magnetic guide, I'm, I'm a little far, far over, so I'm gonna do like this. Mind you, not getting it in the way of the presser foot because then it'll hit it and dink it around. Um, but if I do, we're just gonna start and I go this way. And I'm not even paying attention really to the needle until I get to this point. Um, and, and this is where I would suggest mark your seam allowance like with a dot or a line going in this direction so you stop at the right point. So my needle is halfway down. I'm gonna lift that presser foot and I'm gonna pivot. And then I'm gonna go down. And again, I can just eyeball this guy here. And I'm gonna go very slowly. And that's very hard. See, the fabric is like, no! So as much as I like it, I am gonna have to pivot. All right, so we're just gonna we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna put it around. But I'm using this guy again as a guide to make sure that I don't do the wrong thing. And fancy cut time. And there you go. So we've done that twice, uh, one without a guide and one with a guide. Either way is good. Um, you usually get better as you go along and you do these more. Uh, grab a scrap like this and practice on it. Uh, best thing that you can do to kind of get your curves and your corners under control. Thank you so much for paying attention. I hope that this uh, little skills guide helped you um, figure out how to handle uh, the corners and the curves. Um, they can be a little daunting as you first get into sewing, um, especially if you're just used to doing just the straight lines. So like I said, cut out a scrap, practice on it. Uh, don't, don't waste any good fabric until you get those skills locked down and practice the pivoting technique. So thank you so much. Please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel um, and leave comments down below. I'd really love to hear from you guys to know uh, what content you'd like to see me do next. Thanks.